Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of YouTube videos to help you play chess better. Today we're going to do another video on thought process, and I'm going to try to explain my thought process, but before I start, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is I picked out a really interesting position when I was randomly kind of going through the uh, latest tournament to uh, do some thought process for you. Uh, the bad news is that this is the second time I've done this video. I did an entire video a couple of hours ago on this position. And when I got done, the recording software that I was using messed up the audio and I had to throw out the entire video. So you're not going to see me do this in real time, so to speak, because I've already done it once. So I'm going to try to recreate what I did with a little bit of extra explanation. And um, I'm going to go through it as if, uh, you know, kind of recreating the first time, but with sort of an eye on a little bit on what I already know. So you're getting kind of the good and the bad there. Let's, let's talk a little bit about thought process here. Now, suppose you're in a position like this. Black has just played King F7 and you're white. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get used to what's happening in the position. Now, in a real tournament game, you should already know what the material is and, you know, who's in trouble and who's attacking who and all those kind of things. But in a puzzle like this or in a position where we're going in cold, you've got to figure those things out first. So let's count the material. Both sides have two minor pieces, but black has the bishop pair. So bishop pair meaning someone, someone has two bishops and the other one doesn't. Uh, white has six pawns, black only has, uh, sorry, white has five pawns, black only has four, so white's up a pawn. Uh, both sides have two rooks and a queen, so white's up a pawn for the bishop pair. Um, but as far as king safety is concerned, black's king was in a lot of trouble on g8. He just moved to f7 as a way to stop queen h7 checkmate. And this means it's still white's turn to kind of chase that king around. All right, white's king looks a lot safer. Black doesn't have any monstrously good checks right, right now. Black has earlier moved his pawn to e5, and he's attacking the d-pawn twice, but it is guarded twice. Um, so here we're going to look for what in the heck's going on with what white should be trying to do. And, you know, you're going to look at your checks, captures, and threats. Those are the most forcing moves. And white only has one good check, Queen h7 check, which cannot be met, sorry, Queen h6, 7 check, which cannot be met by Bishop g7 because the Queen takes g7 check, just winning a piece for nothing. So after Queen h7 check, Black has to play King to e6. So that's one idea. Then when you have an mating attack like this and your opponent only has one square to go to, often it's a really good idea to make a list of all the moves that you could play that would guard the square the king could go to and see if any of those might be played first before you play your check so that he's he's stuck in there. So here we have moves like d5 to guard the e6 square or knight to f4. Okay, well, those are therefore both candidate moves. Now, a lot of my students would look at this and say, yes, Dan, but I'm going to eliminate knight f4 because the pawn would just take off the knight and I would lose the knight for nothing and then he's not guarding the e6 square. If you do that, if you eliminate that knight move for that reason, we would call that a quiescence error because after knight f4, e takes f4, then when white plays queen h7 check and black plays king e6, which is again forced, white will have either rook e2 check or rook e1 check, whichever one works better, skewering the king to the rook on e8 and the king can't go back and guard that rook because the queen on h7 is blocking the seventh rank. So already we have what's called tactical justification for looking at knight f4. Knight f4 is not just losing a knight. It, If you guard the e6 square, it's opening up the e-file, which may be decisive in terms of white's attack. So that means that knight f4 remains a candidate move. So we have queen h7 check d5, knight f4. Is there anything else we could play? We could play d takes e5, sort of opening up the center, but there's actually more black pieces in the center than white, so unless that helps us checkmate him, and I'm not sure how d takes e5 helps guard like the e6 square, 
I'm going to look at the other moves first. And in general, when you start analyzing those moves, you don't just want to hand wave and say, you know, I'll just play the one that's a check and see what happens. But if you want to analyze the check first, that's perfectly reasonable. So let's do that right now. Let's start our analysis with queen h7 check. Queen h7 check, king to e6. And now white has to play one of those moves. He could play d5 check. He could play knight f4 check. He could even play queen to g8 check, which is a new check that, that white has after king to e6. So it's looking pretty good because the chances that one of those is going to work is pretty high. Um, we already mentioned that why knight f4 remains a candidate move. So we could look at it on the second move as well. So we kind of have to randomly pick one of those four moves, knight f4 check, d5 check, queen g8 check, and uh, let's see, knight f4 check, d5 check, queen g8 check. We have to pick one of those three moves to analyze. Now, if you pick one of those moves to analyze and it wins the game easily, then we're probably done and we would just double and triple check to make sure it really wins the game easily. And there may well be in this kind of position multiple ways to win the game. And it may be the one that we find that wins easily is not the best move in the sense that we have one that wins even more easily. But if you find a move that leaves you up a piece or leaves you up eight pawns or wins the guy's queen for a knight or something, and there's an eight move combination that checkmates him instead or would have won his queen for nothing instead of winning the knight, you're not gonna spend 20 more minutes trying to find it. Once you find a line where you can win his queen for a knight or you can you know, win material with a, a continuing attack, then you're probably just gonna triple check that and make sure that it really works and then play it because if you have an easily winning line, you don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to just waste a lot of time looking at other moves. So we were mentioning queen h7 check, knight f4 and d5. Now I guess I should mention, if you play d5 first to threaten queen h7 mate, black has a pretty easy defense after d5. He's going to play rook takes h4. So we can probably eliminate that one. And that brings us down to knight f4 and queen h7. But we're going to look at the check first. Even though knight f4, as we've already shown, is tactically justified, maybe queen h7 check is even better. So queen h7 check, king e6. And now we want to play a check. Now d5 check is safe, but the bishop can take it off. And maybe that's good for black. Maybe that's not. So d5 check is a possibility. Queen g8 check, we already mentioned knight f4 check. All right, let's look at knight f4 check. Knight f4 check. Black, if black takes with the queen, then he just loses his queen after bishop takes f4 and white's further threatening like moves like queen takes b7. So he can't he can't take the knight with the queen. So he has to take the knight with the pawn or move the king. So let's look at those two lines. We're looking at queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check. So let's assume he takes with the pawn. Now we're going to check with a rook. For the sake of argument, um, the rook on d2 is behind the d pawn, so it's not as active. The rook on h1 could come into the game on h7. On the other hand, the problem with playing rook e2 check and then rook takes e8 is that's usually not a checking move, and that would take the knight and the rook off the second rank and allow black to play rook to c2 or queen to c2 check. So let's look at rook e1 check first. It, it may be the rook e2 check is better, but so the line we're looking at, and we have to use our visualization here. If you want to work on your visualization, play lots of slow games slowly and do what I'm doing now, which is analyzing the moves by moving them around in your head. You may not be very good at it, but if you do that year after year after year, game after game after game, move after move after move, you slowly get better at it. Your visualization gets better. If you're one of those people that thinks a slow game is a 15 or 20 minute game on the internet, well, then we're probably going to take more time on, on this one move than you would be taking for an entire game. So you're not going to practice visualization as much. And my visualization is going to remain better until you are able to practice things where you have time to move the pieces in your head. All right, so queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check. We're looking at the line e takes f4. And now we're saying, let's say white plays rook e1 check. All right, black cannot play bishop e4. White can just play rook takes e4 check. And that doesn't help black. So he's going to have to move the king. If he plays to uh, d5, I have at least queen takes 
b7 check, followed by maybe taking rook takes e8. So I assume black's going to move his king to d6, so I can't take things with check. So queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, e takes f4, rook e1 check, king d6, rook takes e8. If black now plays queen takes g5 to get a bishop, he's not threatening the rook on d2 because the pawn on f4 that captured the knight is in the way. My visualization tells me that queen takes g5 doesn't threaten that. It may threaten queen g3 check, but after queen g3 check, white can probably just move the king back, let's say, to f1, and if rook c1 check, he can move the rook on e8 back to e1. No, he can't because queen takes his mate. So maybe queen takes g5 does threaten queen g3 check. Uh, white, if white plays king e2, then queen takes g2 check. So, so after queen takes g5, white has to do something. So let's look at that line. Queen, G7, queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, e takes f4, rook e1 check, king d6, rook takes e8, queen takes g5. But now it's white's move. What are all his safe checks in this position? Uh... He's got his queen on h7, his rook on e8. Um, it looks like rook d8 check is a safe check. All right, black cannot put anything in the way. The queen's on g5. So he has to play king e6 or king c6. If he plays king c6, queen d7 is made because he can't go to b5, he can't go to c5. The pawn on d4 is guarding that. Um... Can't go to e5, the pawn on e d4 is guarding that. So let's look at the king running to e6. Queen h7 check, king, notice how I go back to the start to reinforce the line. Queen h7 check, king to e6, knight f4 check, e takes f4, rook e1 check, king d6, rook takes e8. He doesn't have to play queen takes g5, but if he doesn't, what else can he do? I'm up the exchange. And he has no threats if he doesn't take on g5. So queen takes g5, rook d8 check, king e6. We just looked at c6 before. Queen to d7 check. And I think for the same reasons, that's checkmate. The bishop on... Oh, no. The king can take on f6 because there's no bishop guarding it on g5. But if he plays king takes f6, I can play rook takes f8 check winning the bishop with check, and I'm not even sure the king has anywhere to go. The king can't go to g5 because the um, queen is there. He can't uh, go to f5, the rook's attacking it. He can't go to e5, the pawn on d4 is attacking it. He can't go to e6 because the queen on d7 is attacking it. So that looks like mate. So, let's look at that again. Queen h7 check. I'm double checking things. Queen h7 check. King e6. Knight f4 check. E takes f4. Rook e1 check. King d6. Rook takes e8. If he doesn't play, queen takes g5. White just has a giant attack. He's threatening queen takes b7. He's threatening rook d8 check. Black plays queen takes g5. Rook d8 check. King e6. Queen d7 check. King takes f6. Rook f8 checkmate looks like that's okay all right what does that prove you always have to use chess logic to figure out what i just proved well i proved <clears throat> that if he goes to e6 and i and he takes my knight then when i play rook e1 check king d6 rook takes c8 i'm pretty sure white's just winning easily there which means after knight f4 check he has to move the king but he have to move if he has to move the king my knight remains on the board and the bishop on b7 is hanging, <clears throat> which means this is probably just winning. So queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, king to d6. All right, so white has a double discovered check with d takes e5 check, which can't be bad. Um, after, if he plays king takes e5, we can still play rook e1, which is close to mate, he'd have to put the bishop in the way. Um, so he'd probably move the king. So let's look at that again. Queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, king d6. d takes e5 check. If he plays king c6, 
that guards the bishop. So we could do that. Let's look at just taking the bishop. Queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, king d6, queen takes b7. Now I'm threatening queen takes b6 check. I'm threatening d takes e5 discovered check. Let's say black does something there. Let's say he takes the bishop. Queen takes g5, then d takes e5 double check. King takes e5, rook e1 check, king takes f4. Um, interesting. Uh, probably I have even better than that. This, this looks awfully good, but queen h7 check, king e6, knight, e4, knight f4 check, king d6. Um, queen takes b7. Uh, he can play e takes f4, but that transposes into the other line a little bit. Nah, maybe not, but still, if he plays queen takes g6, queen takes b6 check. If rook, if queen to the seventh rank, rook h7 check. If rook to c6, maybe then just d takes e5 double check. And the king has trouble guarding the rook on c6. I mean, I don't really have to figure it all out. I just have to figure out it's winning really easily. And when I get, every time I make the move, if you make the first move of the sequence, like queen h7 check, king e6, I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to look, even though I think knight f4 check is winning, I'm going to look at queen g8 check. I'm going to look at d5 check. You know, maybe one of those is winning with even less lines of analysis. So queen h7 check looks like it's winning, followed by knight f4 check. Knight f4 first is a little less forcing. For instance, if I play knight f4 first, threading queen h7, if he plays e takes f4 and takes the knight, I can transpose with queen h7 check, king e6, rook e1 check. But on knight f4, maybe he should just give his king another escape square. Like maybe he could play rook on e to, you know, d8 or c8 or something. And then if queen h7 check, he can play king e8. Now I still have queen takes b7, but then he could take on g5 or something. So I'm not sure that playing knight f4 first, which is not a check, is better than just checking him with knight f4 after queen h7. So queen h7, king e6, knight f4 check. We've already done e takes f4 several times. So let's look at king d6 again. I'm almost positive king d6 is just terrible. He's leaving my knight on the board. It's my turn. I've got all kinds of attacks. I mean, I'm sure queen takes b7's got to win. I'm pretty sure d takes e5 check, double check is going to win also. d takes e5 double check. If he plays king c6, then... Oh, what did, what did white want to play there? d takes e5 check, king c6. I can't play queen d7 as queen's on it. Um... Not too worried about that position. I still rather take the bishop first, it's more forcing. Rather than playing d takes e5 double check and letting him go king c6. I'd rather play queen takes b6, but I don't have to figure that out now. I, I'm just wasting time if I do that. I'm just to make sure I'm winning, and I'm sure I'm winning in all those lines. It looks awfully, awfully good. So queen h7 check, king e6, knight f4 check, king d6. Um, queen takes b7. If e takes f4, then queen takes b6 check. And it really doesn't have any move. As, as we said, if rook c6, then d takes c, e5 double check, and the queen can't guard the rook on c6 very easily. King can't guard the rook. Yeah, okay. So, you know, since the whole game is on the line here, Chaparinov has 33 minutes. He could easily take, and he has a 30 second increment, he could easily take, you know, 15 minutes on this move like I just did before he makes the move because he really, you know, he could figure out the rest of the win later. So it looks like queen h7 check is pretty much winning here. Um, let's see what Chaparinov did play. Chaparinov played queen h7 check, okay. And he took only three minutes for that move. 
because he realized, oh, this is really good. So black plays king e6. And now we're pretty sure knight f4 check wins. We're pretty sure d5 check probably wins. We're pretty sure that um, queen b7 probably wins. And knight f4 check. Knight f4 check was the one I looked at. But queen g8, I mean, all these lines are really forcing. Let, let's see how many winning moves white has in this position. So let's shrink the board a little bit. And we'll turn on Stockfish 11. And we'll say, Stockfish 11, show us the top five moves. Okay, so right now, the top five moves are all at plus 10 or better, which means they're all winning. If you find one and you're up 10 pawns, you should beat everybody in the world. Uh, Queen G8 check is number one right now at plus 62. Usually plus 62 turns into a mate after a while. D5 check is second with plus 34. Queen digs B7 is plus 30. Knight f4 check, the move that I was analyzing, is only plus 14. Gee, I'd only be up 14 pawns if I played that. What a shame. Okay, and rook b2, which is a move I wouldn't even look at, is plus 11. So all of those forcing moves. Notice the top four moves. Queen g8 check is a check. d5 check is a check. Knight f4 check is a check. And queen takes b7 is a capture. Checks, captures, and threats. Rook b2 is a threat. But here we can do something more forcing than the threat with checks, captures, and threats. So at 27 ply, Stockfish is saying d5 check is plus 80, queen g8 check is plus 77, queen takes b7 is plus 57, and knight f4 check is poor, poor guy is lagging at plus 17. And as I said, if I find a line where I'm plus 17, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my clock looking for one where I'm plus 70. Now he's seeing mates on queen g8 and d5. He sees mate in 18 on queen g8, mate in 20 and d5. Well, as a human, I can't find mate in 18s or mate in 20s, but if I see positions where I'm winning a lot of material, that's enough for me. I figure I'll mate him sooner or later. All right, so let's look at that line with knight f4 check. Knight f4 check, not the best move, but certainly easily enough to win. It says if he takes with the queen and gives up his queen for the knight, he's only he's down 20 pawns. If he takes with the pawn, rook e8 check, king d6, rook e8, just like I analyzed. Um, and now it says, yes, he can't play queen takes g5. Queen takes g5, rook d8 is mate in three, as I said. But if he can't do that, then I'm just... The, the, at that point, I could stop analyzing because... White's up material, and he's got a monster attack on top of that. That's why the computer's now saying that White's up like 14 pawns in that position. It says his best move is king c6. White should play the just the threat queen f7, threatening the bishop. He could have just taken off the bishop with the rook. But queen f7 also threatens queen takes c4 check. Computer has calculated that's the best move. Let's look at another line instead of knight f4. In the game, Chaparinov played queen g8 check. And what did he analyze? Well, if the king goes to the d file, there's a discovered threat with the rook. And we saw that we could have that anyway on the knight f4 check lines. And it says he's skewering the rook, which certainly is good. And it says if the king goes to d6, rather than playing the double check, just take the rook and its mate in 11. You don't even need to check him. Just stop. You're way ahead in material. You know, you've got a continuing attack. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know that it's now mate in 10. So that skewer is perfectly good enough to win already. That's what Chaparinov... And Chaparinov played it in about 35, 40 seconds. He played queen g8 check. And Chigayev didn't have to wait to see whether or not, you know, there's a mate or anything. He just goes, eh... I'm losing the rook. I'm in terrible shape. Do I have any possibilities of counterattacking here? No. All right, I'll give up the ghost. So this is, of course, because of the skewer a little bit easier than my line, but my line wasn't very hard either, and they're all really good. As I said, once you, if you're playing chess and you see a good move, you should look for a better one. But suppose you see a move that wins really, really easily. Should you spend time looking for an even better one? The answer is no. For instance, suppose you have mate in two, should you spend time looking for mate in three? Uh, I'll tell you a little funny story before the end here. Uh, I was at the U.S., um, I think it was the amateur team East a few years ago, and my son was playing 
with expert Alex Grafie on his team. And Alex Grafie had a stair-step mate, a mate where you move your queen back along the diagonal, check, 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 mate. And uh, so Alex sees the mate, Alex is in time trouble, and he sees he can just move his queen along the diagonal, check, 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 mate. So he does, queen c4, check, check, the king goes back, queen d3, check, the king goes back, queen e2, you know, and he comes down the stair step and mates him. And immediately a very strong junior player comes running over, and he says to Alex, wait, after your first check with the queen check, you can move your bishop over here and you can mate him one move faster. <laughs> and Alex turns around and he looks at him and he says, your point? <laughs> and the junior player just kind of looked at him for a second like, I really don't have a point. Alex is like, I have an easy mate in three. I'm going to spend a lot of time in time trouble looking for a mate in two. So same kind of thing. So... Your point, as, as Alex said. All right, so uh, this is uh, breaking down a thought process. And in this case, we were lucky. We had, I, I happened to randomly kind of pick a uh, position for the first video, and I'm showing you the same position in the second video, which is a mating attack. So we could actually call this thought process mating attack. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe to the channel. You can tell other people to watch the videos. I think this is the 89th video on the YouTube that I've made in the last six months. And uh, hit the like button if you like the videos. All right, I appreciate all that. Hopefully this time the video, the sound worked. If it didn't, I'm gonna be really upset. See you next time, bye.